Okay, so let us start with the first presentation. And I'm very uh, happy to have uh, Professor Dr. Martin Schneider here uh, from the University of uh, Paderborn. He will give the first uh, presentation on commitment, satisfaction and health among crowd workers. Uh, first findings of the Paderborn Bielefeld service, uh, survey. And uh, without uh, further ado, uh, the floor is yours and we are very much uh, looking forward to your presentation. Yeah, thank you for your welcome and for inviting us and, and, and myself here to, to Bremen. We're quite excited. Um, well, um, I am excited for a particular reason. That's because uh, we are, um, I'm, I have the, the opportunity to present for the first time um, first results of the Paderborn Bielefeld survey on German crowd working. And, uh, as you, as you said, I, I come from Paderborn. That's why I christened the survey Paderborn Bielefeld survey using my first mover advantage. I hope it will be named like that, uh, named after that forever, but I don't know. So um, this, is a, this is a questionnaire survey we've been conducting in the Forschungsschwerpunkt Digitale Zukunft, which is a larger research product, project funded by the um, Land NRW, um, in order to find out more, among other things, about crowd working. So regulatory questions, but also questions on, um, in, my, in my case, um, how human resource management works, so what are the incentives, what is, uh, what is motivation, what is motivation among crowd workers, health issues, um, issues on wages. So it's a whole range of issues we are interested in. And today I want to follow I want to pursue two goals. First of all, I want to give you an idea what the survey is about. And in the second part, I want to give you a first version, if you like, of a study uh, we, we've been doing. So um, Paul Hemsen and myself, Paul is a, a doctor student. And um, so this second study is, is focused on commitment, on the, uh, on, on the question, who is committed to crowd working? Which is, in a way, a paradoxical question, isn't it? flexible work, you're not committed at all, but you can still measure commitment and ask yourself why certain workers are committed and others are not. So that's the study. And in the first part, I will give you just a few ideas about the survey. And uh, here, of course, a uh, number of people have been uh, involved. There are most, many of them are here. So Nicole is here, uh, Zara, Katharina, and Julian. They've all been uh, involved in this study, and they know the technical report much more. <laughs> Uh, uh, much better than I do. Um, okay, w when we started out studying crowd working, which is, by the way, a German word, uh, it's, it, although it sounds English, um, when we started off, we, we had a discussion, what is crowd working? And we, for our, for our research project, we limited crowd working to a particular group of platforms. It had to be paid work, um, and it had to be digital work, so not delivering pizzas or something, that is not, uh, not our interest, uh, digital work. And finally, we were interested in platforms that manage the platform. It's not only a marketplace or something like that, but it has to be a platform that has its own incentive uh, system, that manages quality, things like that. <clears throat> okay, we try to convince platforms to, um, to have a questionnaire survey among workers. And uh, we found four platforms uh, who would be willing to do so. And uh, the, the survey has just been finished. Um, and you see, the four platforms uh, cover a whole range of different types. So we have a testing platform, a mobile crowd working platform. So it's uh, micro tasks, but uh, um, conducted from mobile phones, so smartphones, uh, a classical micro task platform. And finally, a writing platform. And that writing platform was the only one who didn't insist on, being, on staying in, uh, anonymous, so we can actually name, um, then, uh, uh, name them in the economic context. So it's content.de, a uh, writing um, platform um, well, specialized in, in writing. Very interesting. And we think this survey is quite special for the German context, not only because it's a fairly large sample, but also um, there's a whole range of disciplines involved in putting together the survey. So we have information scientists, of course. 
but we also have psychologists, sociologists, and management scholars. So what we, we try to do is we try to adapt the, um, the scales that we use from other types of work contexts. Scales on health, commitment, working conditions, things like that. We try to adapt them to the platform context and thereby try to adapt the theory, the ideas, the concepts that we know from psychology, from sociology, from human resource management to the platform context. Because we slightly, I mean, uh, Lamas does not, is not here yet, but we slightly have the idea that um, existing work has very, very often focused very practically on social democratic uh, variables, but not so much on theoretical constructs. I mean, this may be provocative, but we think this is the case uh, um, overall if you, if you consider the German context. And we try to make some progress on that. So, um, I want to give you a, a, a first impression on the data. So, first finding is not very surprising. Workers, crowd workers, are very heterogeneous. So, in terms of the highest educational attainment they've, they've got, uh, we have a, a lot of uh, people with a master's or bachelor degree. So, uh, second lesson, a lot of them are highly skilled. Third lesson, there seems to be a systematic difference in terms of for example, vocational ed um, um, uh, educational attainment between the platforms. So um, if you look at content, this, those are the, the, the blue bars, we see that in content we have a large share of workers with an academic degree. Master's degree 36%, bachelor degree 20%. So content seems to be special in that case, uh, which, is, which is quite interesting. Um, and Content stands out in other respects as well. When we look at the data, we see that um, on the writing plat platform content, 44% of the workers report crowd working to be their main employment. It's professional crowd workers, if you like. Uh, and the share is much lower among the, the other types of platforms. Um, content is also stands, out, also stands out because the, the workers report the highest number of, worker, uh, of working hours per week. So almost 16 hours per week on average. So among those, uh, there are full-time employees working um, on content and perhaps other platforms. Yeah? So content stands out. And again, you, you can see there's a whole range of things. Uh, um, uh, uh, there's a whole range of um, the, the, the the, the, the platforms differ um, hugely in terms of, for, for example, um, work hours and also pay. I mean, pay, we, we, we um, calculated pay um, by taking the hours per week those workers report and the monthly wage they say they've earned through crowd working. So this is probably a very rough estimate. It's not very accurate. Uh, it's reported. Uh, indirectly reported pay per hour, but still you can see that probably um, hours um, pay per hour also differs. Yeah? And in one case, not even uh, covering the, the, the minimum wage requirement. We have complied with minimum wage requirements in our questionnaire, by the way. Let's make sure of that. Okay, so taking taking the fact that content in a way stands out. So it's a writing platform where people work a lot of hours and many people uh, do writing on crowd working platforms as, a, as their main employment. Uh, the, the study I want to look at focuses <coughs> only on content. So I'm focusing on one case study, <coughs> content DE, so the writing platform. And the question I want to uh, address is the problem of commitment. So, Here's the paradox. You have professional work. We're all scientists. We know writing well is difficult, isn't it? And also you have, this is a task where you can actually have some specific skills, uh, customer-specific skills. So the, the, uh, the customers of, these of this platform may, have, may ask for similar texts over and over again. And the same workers, the same crowd workers may take on these jobs time and again. So there's some customer-specific human capital, if you like. And if, if you have this type of work, professional work, customer-specific, 
what you can do, what you should do as an employer is hire these workers, retain them, make them happy, make them commit, uh, committed to you. And that's what they, what they can't do. I mean, this is crop working. These, these people are freelancers. They're not employed. They haven't been selected in a proper, in a proper assessment center or something. They just register. Uh, and they can stop working the next minute. I mean, this is, if you like, for specific skills and professional work, this is a nightmare. And so the question, but it, it seems to work. So what's the, that's the, the paradox. So what's the, um, the point that makes it work? And we think that content and other similar platforms have found a solution. Namely, they have uh, come up with a certain incentive system, a rating system that can be considered a commitment device. A device that, that uh, attracts workers, makes them happy, and uh, gives them reasons to stay on and remain engaged. That's the main, main idea here. And what, what do these um, incentive systems looks like, uh, look like? I mean, this is text broker. Content has a similar, a similar thing. You know, so usually it's, it's the, the, the five star idea. One, two, three, four, five stars. You can actually get promoted in this system uh, when you're a good worker, customers are happy, you write a lot, then the platform might say, well, you, you, you used to be two star, now you're three star. Or you used to be four star, now you're five star. Or you, uh, uh, your engagement um, has, you know, has not been so, so perfect the last six months, you're going to be, uh, come down from three to two. And the point, point is that workers have an incentive to be four or five rather than one or two, because first of all, they get, uh, um, they get a higher rate per word, that's the direct incentive, but also they get more interesting tasks. So customers say, may say this is a five or, f five or four uh, star um, task, and only those workers can actually get access to that task. And in a way, this is a commitment device. So five star workers may be five star at content, but not at a tax broker. And that's a, maybe a reason why they uh, want to work for, for content. That's the main idea here. And um, in this study, and again, it's the first, first version, first shot at this. In this study, um, we asked basically two, two and a half questions. So why are workers committed? which is, in a way, a paradoxical question, to that platform, and how does the rating system, the five-star system, how does that matter in, in increasing commitment? And the, uh, the question I haven't really uh, fully addressed is, who are the committed workers? So actually, we try to find out what, among these heterogeneous workers, what are particular types of workers? Workers who work full-time, uh, and are independent, there may be people with side jobs and students, things like that. Which are the groups that we can identify and which are all, which are very heterogeneous, but they all are committed to the, to the platform? So that's the, the question we want to address. And the key points are, well, we, uh, we take up literature and management in psychology and um, adapt the distinction between calculative commitment and effective commitment. It's two types of being engaged or being committed to the platform. Calculative commitment is a rational, um, is a rational thing. I stay with the platform because it pays me better than other pl platforms do, uh, because it, makes, uh, it, 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 it would incur a lot of costs to change the platforms, things like that. So one of the items that we actually asked workers is, if I left this platform right now, I would have many dis it, it would have many disadvantages for me, and they may uh, say yes, that's true or not, not so true. Effective commitment is more of a, an emotional affair. One item uh, by which we have measured that is I'm extremely happy to have chosen this platform. Um, and we think, or I think, and we actually found out that the, this type of uh, commitment, emotional effective commitment, is triggered by social exchange mechanisms. So I like the platform and it gives me, it, for example, I feel comfortable in the platform. I get a lot of uh, recognition from the platform. These are social exchange mechanisms. And what we find is that economic exchange, 
drives calculative commitment, whereas social exchange drives effective commitment. And surprisingly, and very good news for the platform is when people say, well, the, the rating system is very good because the pay aspects of that rating system are very good, then this drives both types of, of commitment. And we measured this by asking them whether, um, wh whether they think that when they move up, when they get one, star, one additional star, will this increase their income significantly. We also asked them whether they're happy with, with the pay level of this platform. And when they, when they agree to those, then uh, they both show high calculative commitment and a strong effective commitment. And we think that the empirical model is meaningful because we can actually see that different, different gr groups of, of workers follow different uh, patterns that lead to commitment. So it's a two-step um, argument that we make here. So our theory is that effective and calculative commitment will depend on certain theoretical mechanisms, motivation and satisfaction with platform aspects. And of course, these, these mechanisms will then uh, or can then be related systematically to certain individual characteristics. So it's a two-step approach. In the, in, in the psychology literature, what you find, usually find is that where you have the dependent variables, um, effective commitment, calculative commi commitment, and that depends on a whole range of factors. For example, age. Yeah? Age may, may be related to commitment. Or things like organizational support may be related to commitment. But th these are different things. One is individual characteristic, sociodemographic characteristic. The other, the other variable is a perception on the platform. And rather than putting them all in one model, um, what we suggest is make sense to look at mechanisms, identify mechanisms, and then go back to the first step and try to find out whether certain uh, mechanisms are related to personal characteristics. So that's the idea. And we think this is better because we do not know much about crowd workers and because crowd workers differ so much in their motivation, in their working hours, in their, uh, in their perception. And that's why we think a two-step approach is, is better. So let's have a look at the, at the variables here, six, six variables or conditions. So we first ask, are, they, are these workers motivated by a lack of job alternatives? Huh? Uh, and they may agree on a five-point scale or not. Are they motivated by, motivated by additional income? These two motives, we think, are economic exchange mechanisms. They may also be motivated by just the idea of passing the time. Want to have a bit of you know, fun online? No. That may, it may be a different, different motive. This is a social exchange motive, we think. And also, they may be motiv motivated by interesting tasks. Now these motivations are possible. Um, they're not exclusive, they're not much mutually exclusive of course, and they're not specific to the platform. What is specific to the platform in our model is uh, are the two satisfaction variables. So workers may be satisfied with the pay aspects, I've mentioned that, the pay aspects of the rating system. They say I earn, uh, um, I make a lot of money when I receive another star, things like that. And they may also be satisfied with the status aspects. The status, I, I termed this status, status aspects because it's, it had something to do with standing, with recognition, with reputation. So workers were asked, the rating system gives me recognition by the platform. And it also gives me recognition among my co-workers. And this is a, so, uh, this is a uh, um, a social aspect, if you like, status aspect, and we think that this uh, may be related to effective commitment. Okay, that's the, um, the theory. Um, wh what you could do is, I mean, you could run regressions, that's the, the, the knee-jerk knee, the knee method we all use. What, I, what we try to do is we try to do something else. We try to do a, a fuzzy set, set qualitative comparative analysis. This is an, a method introduced by Charles Reagan um, in 2000 um, and has become quite popular in political sciences, in sociology and also in, in management. 
And there are a number of differences. I mean, it's, it does a similar job as a regression analysis in linking an outcome to certain conditions. But other than the regression analysis, um, it, it argues that the effects are conjunctural and equifinal. What does that mean? Well, in the regression analysis, you always assume, for example, that uh, satisfaction with pay will increase calculative commitment. Whatever the other variables are like, men or women, uh, motivated by pay or other things. So other things being equal, this will increase calculative commitment. The FSQCA argues, um, well, causation may be conjunctural. It may be um, that people, workers, who are satisfied with pay will only show strong calculative commitment if they are motivated by pay and not by other things. Yeah, so it's a conjunctural argument. This and that will lead to something else. And also, it's an equ equifinality is a, is a possibility. And we were talking about heterogeneous people. So maybe we find people who are motivated by pay and satisfi satisfied by pay with pay, and therefore they are committed. There, there may be other people who do not have an alternative. Uh, and whatever, may, may, may not be satisfied with pay, but they're still committed because they have to. Yeah, so there are different routes to the same outcome. That's equifinality. And you see this actually in the, in the chart here. Uh, when you move from left to right, you see you, uh, the more people uh, comply with the idea they are satisfied with pay and motivated with pay, the higher the calculative commitment. But if, you, if, if they are not satisfied with pay and not motivated by commitment, but they, still may have, they, they may still have a strong calculative commitment. See that? Zero here and one over there. So and these are these other people. They may, may be, they may be committed for other reasons. And that's where you see equifinality. And you see by the triangle that the type of causation is a sufficiency. Yeah? So here in this example, set, being satisfied with pay and, and at the same time being motivated uh, by pay um, is a sufficient condition for effective commitment. It's not a necessary condition. There are other ways of becoming commitment, committed. So that's the idea here. Technically, what we do is it's, uh, we using Boolean logic and set theory um, and w we compare cases. People are each, each person, each worker is a case defined by being in the set of various conditions and the outcome, and we compare these cases, and, and by comparison we find out who, is, he, who will be committed and who, who will not be committed. What we do, just to indicate this, uh, with the data we take raw values and have to decide, in a, in a set, set theoretic sense, when are people in the set, when, they are, when are they out of the set? And for example, calculative commitment, we said, well, if the raw values are one, two, or three, this is not very committed because, you know, you know, with questionnaires, three is really bad. Uh, but four and five, we say this is, this is committed. So it's a, it, it's a calibration procedure here, and we're actually using the fuzzy set values from ranging from one to, to zero uh, in, in doing the analysis. How much time do I have? Uh, I think uh, maximum of 10 minutes. Ah, that's, that's perfect. OK, rather than uh, <laughs> explaining more of the method, which is impossible in this, uh, in this uh, short uh, period of time, I will show you the results. So we have done two minimization procedures, one for calculative commitment and one for effective commitment. You see um, the, the conditions. So in a regression, you would say explanatory or independent variables on the left-hand side. And each column here is a solution. So uh, the colored dots mean the condition is present. It's rather a 1 than a 0. And uh, the dots with a cross mean the condition is absent. It's more a, a 0, not a 1. And the solution can be read like this. Well, People who are motivated by additional outcome, uh, uh, by an additional income, and are not motivated by passing the time, will show strong calculative commitment. 
and we find uh, 103 workers who are consistent with this explanation. And then we have another uh, a, a second path, we call them path to commit to calculative commitment. People who are motivated by additional income and who are motivated by interesting tasks will show a strong calculative commitment. So the, these workers, they differ by all, uh, in all other aspects. They may, be, they may be motivated by a lack of job alternatives or not. Yeah, they may be satisfied with pay aspects or they may not be satisfied with pay. So they are, they are heterogeneous in all these other variables, in all these other conditions. But they all, they all are motivated by additional income and by interesting tasks. Then we have two interesting paths to effective commitment. One is uh, people who are, so this is path four, who are not motivated by a lack of job alternatives, definitely not, and, but they are motivated by interesting tasks, they will show a strong effective commitment. And then people, that's a, the, the smallest group here, 31 persons, say, well, I want to have fun working on that platform, passing the time. I mean, not having fun necessarily. Um, Zeit, Zeitvertrag, passing the time. This is a sufficient condition for effective commitment. And interestingly, and this is, this is very interesting, uh, path three and six um, say that being satisfied with the pay aspects of the rating system is a sufficient condition both for calculative commitment and for effective commitment. And they're different in all other aspects. So it's not a conjunctural causation, it's a path that, that says that if only this condition is met, then uh, people will be, will be committed to the platform. And that's very interesting. So this is the, f the first interesting finding, satisfaction with pay aspects. In a way, we want to evaluate the, the rating system. This is very important. The other aspect, sa being satisfied with status aspects, doesn't really make a difference. Yeah, there's no, no circle whatever for this, this dimension. It doesn't matter. So this is the first interesting finding. And the second is, uh, apparently, there is a difference in the, the causal mechanisms. You see that the, 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 blue, uh, the, the blue dots here, they all, mean, they all refer to economic exchange um, um, mechanisms. And they are important in explaining um, calculative commitment overall. There are two except exceptions I mentioned. So being satisfied with pay aspects also uh, explains effective commitment. And here we have a part that combines a social exchange and an economic exchange mechanism to explain calculative commitment. But over, overall, we think that the theoretical idea, there being two types of mechanisms, hold out. Uh, hold. Good. Th that, that's, the, that's the main part of the study. And now each of these paths, they include different types of people. And w what I want to do finally is have a look at the, the types of people. And maybe we don't go through all the um, all the, the cases here, but what the, the path one. Path one says workers are motivated by additional income, but not motivated by passing the time. And the, what we did is we took, took those 103 people who are the workers in that, on that path and compared them to all the other workers. And what you see here is that the workers on that path, the blue, uh, the blue bars here, they, they work more hours uh, in crowd working and on the platform than the others. Uh, <coughs> and very often, um, they are students, sometimes also employees, but uh, predominantly uh, students. Um, and they basically, those are the people who want to uh, generate uh, additional income. And um, rather than go through them all, uh, what I would like to, to show you is, is, is this. This, the, the, this is the path uh, three and part six, people who are satisfied with pay offered by the rating system spend, they spend much time in crowd working more than other um, people and in particular on that particular platform. If you take the first two bars here, the difference between the blue and the, and the red bar is bigger for time on the platform than it is for crowd working overall. So, it seems to be that these people are more, I mean, they're really committed to that platform and not to others. 
And um, also, th this is a, um, a group of people, including very often women. Um, they, more often than in other paths, uh, do not hold an academic degree. And um, they, are, um, they often do crowd working as their main employment. And of course, that's why, that's why they are so interested in the, in the pay aspects of the rating system. Okay, this is step two, and uh, I'm, I'm, I'm aware this is only uh, preliminary, um, so let me, let me con conclude. Effective calculative commitment are affected by different mechanisms, social exchange versus, um, versus uh, economic exchange mechanisms, and then th these mechanisms commit different, ty different groups of people, which is important for the, for the platform to know, and the platform's incentive system seems to commit workers in both ways, effectively and rationally, which is good news for, for the platform. Um, and well, what we're going to do next, the first step can also be uh, transferred to a, a, an, an FSQCA type of analysis. And we also have, want to have a look at, the, at, 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 at other platforms. Perhaps I, I forgot to mention the smallest group of people, just to show you that the, the, the type of um, Analysis is interesting, and the, the people are really heterogeneous in this platform. This is the smallest group of workers, 31 persons who say that, well, I want to, I'm motivated for crowd working by looking for passing the time. That's sufficient for being committed in an effective way. This is, these are mostly men, mostly em, em, employees, and I mean, usually you would say, in psychology you would say, you have to take, you have to look after your committed workers. Okay, perhaps that's true, but these, are, these people, they do not work so much. It may not pay off to, to look so much after these workers. So they, they, uh, the, the time they spend on crowd working and on the platform is much lower than for other workers. They, this type of workers may not be as important as the other ones. So, and and that, this, I think, supports the, the type of analysis that we are suggesting with the FSQCA. Okay, thank you, and I look forward to your questions. So we have a microphone, and uh, if you have questions, raise your hand, and Elisa will uh, uh, bring the microphone to you. Okay. Th okay, thank you very much. It's a really interesting topic you're working on. I have a question about the QCA method you used. Um, now you basically ch argued around the novelty of the method, which is which is correct. I know I know the method. I like it a lot, in fact. Uh, but, but I wonder why is your sample suitable for it? Because a QCA, at least in in my understanding, applies to a an n somewhere between fifteen and thirty five or something like that. So too big for in depth cases, but too small for regression analysis, but your end is much larger. Um, so I'm, I'm just wondering, it's, yeah. a, it's the way yeah, yeah. QCA is used in business. You would say study, what, 35 aviation firms yeah. and then look for configurations there. That's the, the, the should I respond immediately? Uh, okay, so the Ray, Reagan developed the method originally for exactly the samples you mentioned. So countries, uh, 20 to 50 countries, something like that. But today, actually, uh, people say you should, you can use FSQCA um, if and when you have a configurational theory, when you have the idea that conjunctural causation matters and different paths, different ro roads lead to Rome, then it makes sense uh, to use this method because when you use regressions, um, the variables that you put in, they will wash out. They will not show uh, any results. And it doesn't have anything to do with the sample. I could go on about this. When you have large samples, you ha have to include a larger number of conditions to get meaningful results, but that's another topic. And you just said the configurational theories, which are, very, as you said, very important for QC. To what extent do you go into configurational arguments? I mean, you have the, the, the two type of mechanisms that are sort of in conjunction. Yeah. Um, but uh, do you problematize the meaning of what your configurations are, where they come from? How far do you go down that road? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's always the question. How, how, how specific are you with your, uh, uh, with your configurations? So, what, I mean, implicitly, I haven't, 
I haven't mentioned any hypotheses, but implicitly uh, we would argue that conjunctions such as being motivated by interesting tasks and being satisfied with status aspects will explain effective commitment, but not calculative commitment. S uh, similarly, yeah, yeah, and that, that, that would be the type of hypotheses that you would okay. be able to come up with. Okay. Thank you. Um, thank you very much. Uh, first of all, um, I have a question on uh, the rating um, procedure you mentioned. Um, if I remembered uh, correctly, you mentioned it in a quite uh, positive uh, way um, and uh, as an incentive for uh, commitment uh, for the crowd workers. Um, and uh, I uh, have uh, read some criticism too about uh, this rating uh, system. Uh, concerning uh, the crowd uh, workers and um, according to your uh, opinion um, uh, would it be a good solution um, to implement um, rights for uh, workers to uh, say something against uh, bad ratings for example I would definitely be in favor of that but Paul is actually the expert on the rating system. Do they have something like that? Can workers speak up against the rating? No. no. no I mean, it's just. Actually, not possible. Yeah. It's so. What you're arguing is there should be some voice mechanism. Yes. Exactly. Uh, we only have exit. Yeah, they go to tax broker. But uh, but of course it's a problem. I mean, if you if you look at the, if if we assume that this is an, an accurate estimate of the pay per hour. Uh, writing skills by mostly academic people makes 10 euro 40 per hour on average. It's not so generous, is it? So, in a way, you could you could be you could be critical, but I I didn't want to say it's it's, it's positive. Um, we try to understand we are trying to understand why these platforms do that, and we think that's one of the reasons they do that. Thank you very much for your, um, for your inter interesting contribution. I have actually two questions. First on the sample. Um, as I understand it very well, it's um, online work. Uh, so it's not uh, compared to offline work like like delivery and so on. Is the sample German German in the sense the the people you have been well interviewing or asking um, were they German in Germany for a German uh, platform or do you also have foreign people working for the platform? I assume it's about text, so German text, or is it broader than that? The reason why I ask is that sometimes with on online platforms it's very hard to find. Who is actually doing the job? It's it potentially is, it can be worldwide, which can be for uh, systems like uh, law systems quite problematic to to govern. So Nicole was nodding. She she knows the questioner by heart. Yeah. We we know whether they, these are foreign yeah. workers or not. No, it's German. It's all on German workers, mm -hmm. uh, people yeah. who live in Germany, and yeah. German platforms, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and the well, texts are also in German. <laughs> well, in, in content, of course. In content, content. Yeah. The other because they do German texts, they do German. But the other platforms, I mean. The, with the other platforms, there may possibly be other yeah. nationalities represented. I For the whole study, it's only German crowd workers. Oh, really? Yeah. So we limited that to the Germans? Yeah. Oh, oh, dear. Because, okay. We because of the funding. The <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, because it, it can have an influence, of course, on, on some of the, the answers or some of the, the measurements. Um, because some, some of the online platforms, they, well, they act globally and they try to. Uh, maybe they don't have that ambition to commit, uh, they, 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 don't, they don't care. Maybe here that ambition exists because it's very hard to find enough people and so on and so forth. Um, so that, that, that was um, one. And, and the second um, uh, question, um, do you find some correlations between the economic um, well, satisfaction, if I can say so, and people who are mainly working on the platform as a main occupation? And then the ones who do it as a kind in their spare time, as a part time, as something in addition, 
or people who have a partner having a main income and don't need that, that money so much that they do it more out of affection, if I can say so. Because what, what we, I mean, I'm, I'm really working um, as a lawyer in the field, um, and what we do miss is a clear picture on who they are. The, the people working on, on platforms, whether they do that uh, as a main occupation, whether it's a kind of side job, um, there are not so many data on it, and so we are still a little bit in a kind of black box. Uh, we have some averages of income. I have seen some studies in UK and, and, and US and so on, where the average income is, is, is rather low, but that can be partially explained because it's a side job uh, that they, they, are, they are doing. So what, what we are very much uh, eager to find out is, and here I saw some data that apparently half of them do it as a main occupation, but that can be explained, of course, it's, it's rather, well, it's, it's a high-skilled, to some extent a high-skilled job. Um, whether you, you see some correlations there that there is more economic drive when it's your main occupation and there is more affectional drive when it's a kind of site. This, this piece of evidence is actually one, uh, one example of what you're getting at, I think. This is, these are the workers who are satisfied with the pay offered by the platform and they're, they're, this group of people is distinctive for um, having a larger share of, of workers who say crowd working is my main employment. So in a way you can see that they, they are more focused on the pay aspects. Yeah? But of course you could, we, could, we could have a look at that more systematically. And that's the nice thing about these configurational methods. When you say, when you say we want to know who these people are, I mean this is, this, is not, this is not the correct answer to that question because what you say, what you say here, well, uh, they are a little bit more likely um, to be uh, women than men. But you want to know how many women, how, yeah? and com combined with other characteristics. And that's what the configurational methods and our data could actually have a look at. And to your first question, I mean, this is an additional, an additional thing we want to work out, um, want to find out, and Paul is going to talk about this tomorrow, which platforms uh, implement this type of rating. And we think it's systematically those platforms who need really skilled professional workers and not the others. So thank you very much for the interesting talk. Um, I'm working mainly on microtasking. And on, in microtasking, um, workers usually tend to be loyal towards an employer. So this is what you sometimes see on, on forums like uh, uh, Turkey Nation. You see that um, if you are a large employer, people know when you submit tasks and they are actually expecting when you are submitting tasks. So this means, for, from my perspective, uh, workers are less uh, committed to the platform but more to a specific employer or to a set of employers which are on a platform. So did you also ask basically the workers or did you check what what kind of employers you have on those platforms? Are there a few large ones which re regularly submit tasks or are they very, very diverse so that you can really say workers are committed to the platform or not to the set of employers on that platform? I don't think we've got that. We know whether they're de they, were, they are dependent employees, but we don't have any information out about the employers, do we? No, we don't know that. But okay, yeah, I get your point, yeah. But, but let, let, me say, let me say this, I mean, is, are you talking about this type of uh, micro-task platforms, paid work? Yeah, like okay. the or something. Okay, all right. Maybe, maybe you can also derive from, uh, from the phrasing of your questions. Um, so maybe you can also derive from the phrasing of your question. So did you really ask for the platform specific things? Or, for example, like the, in, the possible income is basically dependent on the employ, uh, employer side. Well, so we know a lot about this. We know uh, family income and income from other sources, income from crowd mm -hmm. work. We know this. Ah, maybe. So we, we, are, we really are, we asked about their commitment to the platform, not to the employer. Okay. This is, this is a different thing. We adapted the, the scales. We usually uh, use it for organizational commitment or commitment to your profession, to team. 
And now we, we only ask commitment to the platform, not the employer. Sorry, I didn't get your question. I have, an, I have another question. Um, it, it's kind of like related to that one. Um, since you focus on the commitment, I mean, there are also some downsides of these reputation me mechanisms. And I'm wondering, do you also take these into account? Because, because reputation might also generate some kind of enforced dependency so that, you, that the worker is locked in. Yeah. Well, it's actually part, part of the scale. I, I, cannot, I cannot change. I'm committed to the platform because it, it takes too many, it has too many switching costs to, to go away. We actually know this. It's part of the, of the outcome here. Thank you. Uh, yeah. I have my own microphone, so <laughs> I, I, I can directly ask. So one, one result uh, that surprised me in your survey was that, I mean, uh, being an economist, uh, I, I'm very surprised by the fact that you know, if you have a higher de degree in your education, right, I mean, you go to this one platform where you have to write the text uh, more often, but at the same time, at this platform, you earn less money. So uh, the, 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 you know, the, the conclusion you could draw out of this is that, you know, education doesn't pay off at all. Because you, you, you would be free to switch, right? I mean, just go to the testing platform, you earn uh, three times as much money as on the other platform. So I don't understand why these people are doing the job they are doing if they could go to another job which requires less uh, training and they would earn, th I mean, 300%, right? I mean, um, so, so I, don't, I don't see why they are doing that. Nikon has been criticizing this chart. Uh, Perhaps I shouldn't have shown this. Not the shorts, but the people. Yeah, well, <laughs> They're not behaving I mean, like the first, novel. First, <laughs> I said, we, we, I'm not, not really sure whether this is a, an, an accurate estimate. But if we assume it is, well, first of all, these people in content, they, they know how to write. Um, they may not know how to do other things. They may not know how to design or to test software or not They'd being interested. So it's a different skill. And Third answer, I mean, I don't know, you have to have tasks that are available, don't you? I mean, uh, I'm not a crowd worker, but I could imagine that lucrative tasks, well-paying tasks, uh, are not so easy to get for 30 hours per week. In content, you may have that. Pay per, per hour may not be so, uh, so, so high, but you, are, you know, you know, you know the, the website, you know the You've got the skills, you know perhaps the customers, the types of texts you have to write, and there may be a lot of this of this type of task around. So, so what you're saying is, is testing is software testing, or could it be another testing like in the, in the data we have, for instance, you could test software a new testing, isn't it? nail polish or whatever. It's okay. Software testing, web testing of web interfaces uh, and so on, but uh, we have to know that. The, the pay per hour is really low on the content of the eve page, but the overall income on this platform, on content e, is the biggest one of all platforms. It's so it's a bit confusing in this chart. You, you have, you, at the same time, you have the highest number of, of hours per week. Yeah, but it can be a, a worker decision, but it can also be the fact that enough jobs are around. Yeah, so you may not be interested in ma maximizing your pay per hour, but when you are rely on a regular income, you may be interested in a monthly wage. Okay, so do we have any more questions? If not, uh, thank you very much again. Um,